we'll just wait a couple of minutes. Uh, if you guys are okay with it, I'm recording the, the video. Okay. And just, uh, it's sort of an experiment to see if, uh, <laughs> if we can get this right. Okay. Hey, Simon. Hi. How's everybody? Good, Simon. How are you? Good, thanks. Yep, pretty good. How about, and uh, what's the temperature like in Chicago at the moment? I think it's 40 or so. I mean, it's kind of warm today for us, anyhow. <laughs> okay. We've had a, a huge amount of snow today in Scotland. Hmm. It's been very, very cold here, uh, Simon. Uh, some days mm. was minus 20 or something like that with the windshield factor. Wow. So, uh, so positive actually felt warm compared to that. And mm. Here in Mexico City is 22 degrees, but not, fa not far in Celsius. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. 20, 20, uh, 22 degrees Celsius. I know, I don't know how was how much how is in Celsius. Fahrenheit. Sorry. Oh, so seventy two Fahrenheit. It's too hard, Ulysses. Who wants <laughs> Who wants to experience that kind of weather, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Said the jealous man. <laughs> but we have a lot of chaos here, a lot of traffic. Self-organization cars. Let me check on messages just, just to make sure that everyone, well, it's only 204. I guess I, we can allow a couple more minutes, but I don't see anyone. I think I saw Brad Wolf here earlier, but he's, yeah, like he's gone. I saw him as well. I don't see, I only see the four of you guys, Mark, Ilya, Simon, and Ulysses. Let's see. Oh, there's, uh, there's Wolfgang Bickle. And I think that's it. Hi, Ilya, how are you? Hi, guys, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you now in Chicago, Ilya? Yeah, yeah. I, I have arrived yesterday and <laughs> it's a beautiful city, but a, a big jet lag, nine hours. Absolutely, it's absolutely. Chicago, so it's hard. I would have offered to uh, meet you downtown and have dinner with you, but, but I got busy here. And so I'm going to make it to downtown tonight. So that you guys know, we have a business agility class tomorrow morning here in Chicago. So I guess I'll just uh, I'll just start by uh, some opening remarks. I guess 
this is the the public call you know to um to explain what is in the enterprise scrum definition 4.0 and so as a as a summary if you will um let me see if i can go back to the presentation and change uh, pages again so there were there were a number of promises done by the enterprise scrum framework primarily two of them which were universal agile management and scaling that's what we started with there was a, con a, a configuration to configure you know the, the different type of work so there was some guidance as to how to create for example vli types value list item uh, or value list types which for example could be for marketing and sales very different than software development very different than compliance management the 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 goal for this framework to begin with was universal agile management and then so i started jotting down this a few years of course a few years back configuration parameters in a, a way to model how to introduce that right and so that is that is the um still there but now there's a graphical way to configure these things i, I will show you guys that uh comes into the so-called more business-like enterprise scrum configuration the some of you guys that already took the enterprise scrum class you know that there's some scaling patterns and scaling options for the for the uninitiated they may seem like a lot of options but what i tell people is when when you go for dinner you know there's five choices of you know what you're going to drink five choices of soup five cho choices of salad five choices of a main dish and five choices of dessert seems overwhelming but it's, it's really not so hard to arrive at that a lot of those options are driven by context and so that was there all of that stuff was there for since version two or so uh it's been very stable the the scaling and the in the genericity the universal agile management so the stuff that was added if you see the screen can, can you guys see the screen that i'm sharing okay good so uh so the stuff that was added is a more business-like configuration that some of you guys that had read the enterprise scrum definition before for example michael herman for example pierre Nais, they immediately complained mike what is this stuff it looks looks like some cryptic code and you know looks like code and uh, that was short hand for me to remember all the stuff that I thought it was important. And to be honest with you, unless there was someone that was implementing that stuff, I did not even mention it. So I didn't want to scare them, right? So all of that is now done in a graphical way. Uh, we're gonna see a little bit of that. There's now, uh, especially after this year, I was convinced if if you remember what has been the trend of enterprise scrum is to look at everything that is important all at once so you know i the example that i will give all the time is requirements are important infrastructure are important architecture is important the plan is important the team and the customer are important so we would co-evolve all of these things together right yeah and there's there's even more things how about leadership support how about the debts issues and impediments you know the, which are local to to any enterprise scrum or scrum instance how about the engagement uh, you know collaboration and competence of the people in the team so i made these things so some of those things that actually were there in the original parameters certainly the collaboration and competence we added engagement to that and highlight that as a as a as a model for you know if you are a coach 
in this common conversation, right? Can you get, can, will agility work for you all that well if people are not competent, not engaged, or not collaborative? No, it's not going to work. So in other words, the magic of agility is agility go, is, is agility going to work if you don't have the appropriate leadership support? If you have issues and impediments that only leadership positions can solve and they don't solve them for you, or in fact, they make them worse, that, do you have any chance to have agility done in any place on earth? No. And so, uh, so these things became, if you want to look at it this way, added things that you need to co-evolve. So we're still on this way principle of looking at things, at, at all the things that are important in co-evolving them at once and make the, making them visible. So I, I joke around that you could easily change the name of Enterprise Scrum to just visible Scrum. The goal is to have everything that is important visible so that you can so that you can address it right you know what what are the, the main promise of scrum is to make everything visible and as much as i like scrum plain old scrum if you will there's still a lot of hidden things in scrum unless you are a savvy coach you are not even going to ask for these things So another thing that was added was this complex morphing evolving instances. So I'll give you some background on, on how this happened. I've been writing the Enterprise Scrum book, or I was writing the Enterprise Scrum book as a book for agile management. So I would tell people, you know, as, as, as you guys saw our current uh, survey on the Enterprise Scrum group, I would tell people, well, you know, there's uh, 35 plus activities that people use Scrum or Enterprise Scrum for, and I, I will show you how to customize your work for, or some guidance as to how to customize your work for any one of these instances. Yes, but a story of transformation, a story of how a company, let's say, got to 25 concurrent software development teams or a business agility transformation is told through changes in the way you manage things. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you the CBS Caremark story and you will see why it's not, you cannot tell that story just with one instance. So it starts by getting a hold of what you want to transform, agilely manage what you're trying to transform. So in our case, we wanted to transform 30 plus applications at CVS Caremark into agile management, into agile development. Then we got a hold of the, of the people managing the different applications and we involved them in a group that was making decisions as to what we would transform next. Then from the portfolio, we started converting each one of the applications. So the, in other words, this agile management wasn't just to manage the, the application development, wasn't, wasn't to manage the portfolio or to do the transformation. It was all of the above. When I look at some of the stories for business agility and business agility transformations, they follow the same pattern. Almost invariable, you start by starting some agile management, then expanded that to portfolios, and then eventually taking a value list of applications for business units or customer segments and start transforming them. So this, this is why we ended up with this morphing or evolving instances, because, because the, stories, the stories were created like that. There, there was not switching, you know, there, there was not at some point in people deliberately saying, now let's switch to a portfolio management and now let's switch to transformation. No, it was one continuous instance of agile management that was morphing on the go, you know. And so, uh, 
So when I found these guys, and, and to be honest with you, I'm super excited, especially about that, because now it makes it easier to explain, for example, a business agility to transformation. I think the class now uh, is much more um, in accordance to what is happening on the street. The last class we took the city of Chicago, which by the way is doing a business agility transformation, and we went through the analysis of how the management would go in getting a list of business units and customer segments. Then we picked up a business unit in a customer segment. We took that and we started analyzing the value streams. We had a couple of management consultants working for the city of Chicago, and then we proposed how to improve in a cycle that particular customer segment. And so after that, what do you do after that? Well, you do another cycle and more improvement and just keep going, right? Uh, and that's, that's the way you manage things. So this also unifies company management with business agility. You start doing this management, it grows to manage everything else, right? Uh, and so any, any questions that you guys may have at this point? Yeah, I have I have some 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 uh, doubts about the the spawning uh, instances. When 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 you configure an instance, it's just uh, when you you configure it uh, through configuration of the customer segment, uh, metrics, etc. Or or you do it by by the canvas. Uh, so, uh, so when 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 do you, when for example, if if you are configuring an instance, what what but what are all the things that you need to 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 consider, and and, and how do you spawn? How do you uh, evolve? Or what so, is the suggestion? So I'll, I'll give you an example of something that you already know, Ulysses. So let's say let's say we have a startup, right? As the startup, the startup let's say has five people to begin with. They're they're doing the the business model canvas. As they grow. Their, their business model becomes scalable and repeatable. And now they can spawn this marketing and sales instance because the business is stable. Later, as they grow more, they can spawn a software development out of the original you know, team, right? So the this, this spawning is easier, if you will, than the morphing. The spawning is just uh, if you remember that, actually, I'll show it to you because you you will remember easier uh, this this graph, right? It will certainly um, make it easier to remember. You remember this graph, right? So when you start when you start the startup, you are one of these blue um, business model canvas. As you grow, you can spawn a marketing and sales, and then you can spawn a software development. If you grow your startup and now you have two customer segments, now you have a business unit, right? And so, so the instances, if you will, grow uh, as, as the company grows, right? Uh, and so that will be the way by which you spawn these things, you know? Okay. Now, okay. Now, now, now it's now is 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 clear because th that graph I I didn't uh, saw it, but because I took the the training in February the, of the last year, and 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 then uh, you published this like three months later. So, but I have, uh, but but I ha I, I have a doubt about that since since no problem. Published. No problem. So this is this is what I'm doing the sessions, right? Uh, let let you know. Take all your questions, and this is really why I'm making these sessions, so that you guys can ask any questions you may have. You know. So uh, I, I should have done this earlier, but we're, we're doing it now. You know. So, uh, so the, but, the, but the morphing is a little bit different. The morphing is where you take, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example, right? So you can take, Let's say that you started at the C-level, executive level, and you say, I wanted to start agile, doing agile management of my C-level executive team. That team will then identify the portfolio of business units or the portfolio of customer segments. Then now you jump into portfolio, 
So you expanded now the sea level management in also doing portfolio management. And then you take one of these things and you start agilizing a customer segment. Oh, Mike, uh, I, I have a, a suggestion. Maybe it uh, can work, I don't know. But I, I understand that every canvas is a, is a team, no? So we are building a kind of a structure of teams. So just imagine so, that- So just to clarify, just, just to clarify, it's one or more teams. Each one- oh, of, One or more team, okay. Managing one canvas. What, one or more teams, so it, it could also have a scaling. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, now I understand better. So I'll show you some of this stuff um, since we already sort of talked about it, but I'll just show it to you so that you can see more graphic way, if you will. So we have the genericity, right? That's adding, it's quick review for you guys, right? Adding a definition of ready, a definition of done corresponding to each one of the value types, adding the extra attributes, adding the techniques and patterns, customizing the initial value list in the planning, collaboration, review, and improve cycles, adding metrics, calculations, and reports, which can be recurring, of course. Then we added now the leadership, debts, issues, and impediments. So it's a more, it's a more complete model of agility or enterprise scrum, if you will. What we want to do, and this is, this is the purpose of all of this stuff, make it harder for people to fail at it because they got hit by a beer truck on the, you know, from the side. So this is, this hopefully will make things that are important visible to everyone. So at least you have a chance to fix it or, you know, you, you were not surprised, right? Uh, by, uh, by, by these things. So you guys know the generic canvas, we, we put the, the different things that are of interest, for example, for marketing and sales, would be messages, campaigns, items sold, funnels for the reports, for compliance would be posts and procedures, internal controls, board level reports, and so on and so forth. You guys are familiar with how the workflows from a vision to an initial value list. Now that we have the extra attributes and the techniques, we can customize that initial value list, and we also, of course, customize how we do the, uh, the, the planning, collaboration, review, and improve cycles. For example, I'll give you one example in Scrum, right? In Scrum, we, we can use very many different techniques like user stories and release planning, you know, just to give a simple example, right? Where in the Scrum guide does it tell you how the process looks once you added user stories and release planning. Nowhere to be found. Where does it tell you what parameters are configurable in that process or how to derive a process based on extra attributes or extra techniques? Nowhere to be found. Where does it have examples of creation of instances? And again, just to, just to give an easy one, even just the 90% the of the world that use user stories and release planning, of course, if you add user story mapping or customer journeys or BRDs or whatever else, now that instance is going to look different. And so that's what we address here. How do you configure these things? What is explicitly configurable? And then give examples of how you do it. You see, you guys seen uh, this a thousand times. 
choose the different structural patterns, collaboration modes, contract types, delivery modes, and delivery targets to match your needs for scaling. And not all, these patterns not only work for software development, they work for you know, marketing and sales or compliance or transformation, right? And so it's not scaling just of software development, it's scaling of anything that needs to be scaled. This is what I was uh, talking about earlier, where we have a canvas now, and you can take, if you print this in a large format, or you know, use uh, paper to, to write it down, if you will, you can start putting stickies, you can take the configuration parameters from the, from the definition and configure this thing visually. That's a huge plus, why? Because you know, we, will, we will actually do an exercise in the class doing this tomorrow. That way is something graphical, is something visible. It's not, a, it's not a one shot thing though. You do an initial configuration and they keep adjusting as needed, of course. Now we have this explicit agile leadership model. Now remember, enterprise Scrum doesn't tell you how to, do, like, like Scrum, right? Doesn't tell you how to do the work doesn't tell you what techniques to use, doesn't tell you what metrics to use, and it doesn't tell you what agile leadership model to use. And this, this is, is what, great. What, this is what, what Simon was asking uh, the other time that we had a conversation. Mike, can Jay, Ulysses, there's something in your background, there's some TV or something, anyhow. So uh, Simon was asking, can we plug our leadership model? Yes, you can. You know, uh, I, I believe Stasia is working on an impediment uh, modeling or resolution. Can she plug this impediment resolution technique? Yes, she can. So, so again, this is a framework. We're not telling you how to do leadership. We are telling you that it's something important that you need to, that you need to be uh, aware of and that you probably need to uh, make some decisions about it. That's really what it is, right? Same thing with the engagement social competence model. We don't tell you what competence means to you or engagement or collaboration, but we tell you that these things are important and if you don't look at it, you are, you are you know, basically you're turning a blind eye into something that is important. There is a way to capture, if you will, all of this in a visual way. And so now when, when an when a enterprise Scrum coach or so realizes, you know, let's, let's take a you know, sample from the trenches and find out where we are, right? And then uh, how can we improve this thing and make it visible? That is really, that, that is, so, so to, give a, to give an example in the retrospective, right? When we do a Scrum retrospective, of course, we touch up a little bit on these things, but now we make it explicit. It's on the wall, if you will, and these are the things that we want to, when do we want to improve competence, engagement, and collaboration? All the time. And there's, there's issues with this all the time, so might as well make it visible, right? So the complex uh, morphing evolving instances, Obviously, you start with a problem, you start with initial configuration, but the key is to keep changing that instance as needed. Change it, change it as it goes. Uh, the example that I was giving you, you start with company management, the company management expands to business unit portfolio, and then it starts to transformation or expands to transformation, let's say of a customer segment, this is a very, very much recurrent pattern, if you will, this MPT pattern. You start with management, portfolio, and then transformation. Same thing with the debts, issues, and impediments. So if you don't have them up front, and this is not the canvas for that, it's just the, the way things have. You can, at the, at the review and improve meetings, you can ask, so what are our debts? What are, what are we not doing that perhaps we should be doing? Which of those things are issues? Which of those uh, from the debts can be or improvements? And what, which of those become impediments so that we can go after them and resolve them? Make all of this stuff visible. 
You probably saw my post, uh, at least in a couple of places, about resonant agility. I finally, finally, after very many years, I've been, I say things like this just about every day when I teach the classes. You know, people need to believe in what they do. They need to want to do what they do. They want to like the people that they work with, at least to the point where, you know, they, they can collaborate and so forth. But this is really what I would say the, 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 the subset of agility that is really going to be much stronger. You can have people and interactions that are very, very low quality, or you can have people and interactions that are super high quality. And so this is the kind of stuff that it will make you have better, you know, better collaboration, better engagement, better competence, right? Uh, you guys saw the recent survey that we did. Uh, about We got a, about twice the votes from last year, so you can see the results here. Still software development, still number one, but then follows very closely with agile transformation, change management, business agility, portfolio management. So these activities are things that people want to do on the street, uh, all the way down to board management. I would love I would love for every every board on planet Earth to be a little more agile. That would help a lot. And so the example that I give for for um, for the saints is the instance of Scrum with business agility. Not only can you do software or hardware or compliance, but you have an instance of Scrum for the whole company management. So that is pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. Do you have any questions at this point? Uh, I, I have like more, um, uh, I, I think, thanks for this. This is really, really interesting, Mike. And uh, I, I read the, the, the Enterprise, Enterprise definition like six times. And, and, and I have some, some doubts at, at, at some points. Uh, for, uh, for, there is a part of, of, of the, of the document that I would like to like send you some comments and see what you think. But generally, I, I have the, the things more clear and 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 I understand now what is the power of, of the canvas and the and, and all the things that you are saying about information layers, how to configure all the things. It, it, I think we have a, a really really uh, uh, blue ocean in this. Uh, we 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 have a lot of. Um, opportunity with, with all this uh, stuff and, and I feel really uh, enthusiastic about uh, all, all those all these things just just only that for now Ulysses for now we <laughs> for now we have the leadership right and this is why I was so adamant to start things last year even though you know I didn't feel they were perfect but I thought I might as well get started with this because they will come there is no doubt in my mind that someone, I mean, as far as I know, this is the only universal agile management framework, if you will. Uh, people say you can use Scrum, right? But the hoops that you have to jump to do it are too hard, you know. So this just makes it easier, if you will, to generalize. Uh, and obviously, to, to, some, to some point, at some point, it's really very hard to reach this if you don't have some guidance, you know. And that, that is really the interest, trying to make things easier for people wanting to agilize marketing and sales or compliance or whatever else they want to agilize, right? And so uh, the, it is, I think it's an opportunity, but, uh, but again, I would say with, you know, with certainty, they will come. There's, there's a lot of smart people on the planet and I have no doubts that they will have, uh, you know, a competitive pro products. I'm surprised they haven't come to be, to be honest with you. I, I just want, I just have a one doubt. When when you're creating the canvas, I I don't know where to put the things in that way or in that way, or how do you structure, start to structure the the this information layers. So oh. you start with the beach, and that is clear, and then how you move down or when oh, you put so the that, squares in that way or that's so sure i'll give you some guidance and maybe maybe i should write more about this 
So it is really about mapping a value stream in circling, circling on it. So if you look at all this, for example, look at the business model canvas, all this stuff from the suppliers, all the way from doing the work and then delivering the work to the customer. So, so picture in, your, uh, in that business model canvas, all of the value stream coming from left to right, right? But, but it circles. Then the customer comes back through the customer service and relationships and so forth, and it circles back. It's, it's a value stream that circles back and loops around. The, the vertical is more um, the financial staff, the reporting, if you will, is in the bottom, and the vision on the, on the top just for the purpose of more or less having a, uh, you know, what are the goals, how do we do the work, and how do we manage it from top, from top to bottom. So that's, that is the structure of every canvas. Yeah, I, I, uh, I understand that it's, it's a visual aid, doesn't matter where, how do you ordinate them, but if we have a, like, a, like a tips to, 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 to to know how to spam things, uh, uh, it's great. But but I understand that this is only a visual aid to help the team to 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 erase those uh, silos, no? Because we need to think strategically, strategically, and, and the, that the visual aid will help us to to manage uh, our priorities, no? But uh, but but just 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 the question is when you. How how you can reuse some canvas to other situations? No, uh, or 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 if or if that is not like um, possible. Or... No. So the 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 key idea is to have everything that is important for an activity visually available, so that you can look at things. So when you plan for things, everything that is important is in front of you. Then when you do the work, everything that you need, everything that is important is in front of you. When you review and improve things, everything that is important for that domain is in front of you. That's the idea of the canvases. So, so I'll give you an example, right? For software development, when do we review architecture, infrastructure, or customer assumptions in Scrum? We don't. We don't. A very smart agile coach will say, well, guys, maybe it's important to look at the customer assumptions, or maybe it's important to look at the channels, or maybe it's important to look at the infrastructure or the architecture or the plan. Yeah, but that stuff is not visible. You have to be, you know, sort of uh, enlightened yourself to, to even look that way. While here is just in front of you. Of course, you can do that for any domain. You can do that for marketing and sales, or you can do that for compliance, or you, you can do that for business agility. Any other questions, guys? So since there's not really a lot of public people, you know, that I can see, I see Shika here. I have uh, Anthony, I'm not sure. So I'm just going to ask them to introduce uh, themselves. Uh, if you guys are listening to us, Ilya, Anthony and Shika, just uh, quick introductions, you know. Hi, so I'm Shika Carter. Um, I actually underwent Mike's course back in December. So um, in a prize scrum in the class that we actually used the uh, city of Chicago as in exercise and going through that and trying to agilize various customer segments. So I'm a business agility coach and trainer in the Atlanta, Georgia area.
Maybe Ilya just left his seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, Ilya. Well, I, I live in Moscow, and uh, I have been a professional scrum trainer at Scrum.org for four years now, was the first person in Russia. But uh, during the last years, I've been transforming companies and uh, it's very difficult to come from single, single team Scrum, even scaled Scrum to business agility because there are so many questions that I cannot answer uh, right now. How to transform the whole company, marketing and sales compliance, uh, governance and other things so that's uh, I hope I will give get the answers tomorrow the day after tomorrow because I'm in Chicago and well, I can we'll give you well you, we'll give you our version of it Ilya for sure uh, yeah. and so I can guarantee we're gonna have some fun doing it not sure what we'll end up picking up to transform but uh, okay so we'll, we'll, that, that's the exercise that we do in day two we do essentially a simulation of business agility from, from beginning to end. Great. I see uh, Anthony and Paul, you know, just want to make sure. I, I think they just join in, maybe. Yeah, so this is Anthony. So I'm a business analyst, also took my Scrum Master training class about a year ago. So a uh, practitioner of Scrum, but I'm also trying to learn how to take agility to the next step. So I'm just continuing to learn. It's gonna get more interesting in the next few years, guys. In 2016, people thought they wanted to do this. In 2017, we started some people jumping in, especially large banks, financials, insurance, pharmaceuticals, man, you know, some of the larger manufacturers. This year, I know for a fact, most of them have budgets. So it's becoming real, you know. Any other questions you guys may have? Actually, I... I have one, Mike. I know a lot of the community conversation happens on, on Facebook. Is there, is there a way for people who are not avid Facebook participants to be able to keep up with, with Enterprise Scrum and, and developments as they're occurring? Well, we have, we have another community on LinkedIn, but to be honest with you, and I, it may be just because of the LinkedIn groups, uh, the way they work or the way they they get managed, uh, there's a lot less activity and a lot less users there. So I do when I announce things, I announce through four channels: uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and then the the, the groups. You know, the enterprise Scrum groups in both LinkedIn and, and Facebook. Uh, but uh, I mean, and we do the community. Um, events in the conference. So the conference program in the conference announcement will go out in February for sure. We wanna make sure that we're a little bit earlier for that. And so we also have, uh, you know, uh, we, we're, I have actually a final conversation with Evan Labron from the Business Agility Institute. And uh, we decided we're gonna join them so I'm going to find out or <clears throat> negotiate the best terms that we can for us tonight. And then hopefully uh, they will allow all of us to take advantage of the membership. And that's really one of the things that I'm pushing for. Okay, that's good. I wonder if for for some of the the, the larger announcements like the, the conference, if um, you'd, you would consider email notification to people who either are uh, have, have been through the class or or are the, the the coaches and and trainers just in case they may have missed announcements on the in the social media you know mark i think it's a great idea i think for 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 important things i should make a habit of it because it's easy to miss you know you know, a Facebook post or so, you know. 
And so even, even if people are tagged, I know, for example, Rick Waters, he basically says, Mike, the only reason I'm a Facebook member is because of the Enterprise Scrum Group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> a, a bit Quaresh is the same. I mean, they, you know, these are not heavy Facebook users by any means, you know. And so I really should, you, you, have, you make a good point, I really should make an effort to communicate in some other ways. All right, thanks. I'm not trying to add to your plate. I know you're no, a busy no, I mean, it's, And I also don't I'll want tell to you, it's, important it's, things. It's as easy. I have your, the emails from you guys, and it's as easy as, it's really easy. I mean, I just copy my message and then, you know, load an email and send it to you guys. It's not, it's not a terrible thing. And I just don't do it. So I, you know, I just didn't do it. Okay. So. Very good. Thanks, Mike. No, no problem. Any other things that you guys want to talk about? I'll end up, I'll end up saying uh, something, guys. This year, as you guys know, I do a lot of public trainings. This year, I am going to go out of my way to bid for business agility transformations. I want to involve as many people are, you know, as, as, as we can. Uh, I think we're forming an uh, interesting enterprise strong community. And that's what I want to do. I want to not only teach this stuff, but I want to go inside the company and maybe just be careful, you know, uh, who, who we partner with, if you will, and really try to help them to do something cool. And so at the end of 2018, what I want to do is see that we help five companies or however many, very many, you know, that's the interest that I have. I have the interest of going out there and helping people become more agile. I think we have a great team of people that are very capable, very passionate, very engaged. And I know that's what it takes, you know, to do some great things competence and engagement and willing to collaborate. So uh, I'll share that with you because as the hopefully the opportunities will develop and as the opportunities develop, I will switch more and more of my time from public courses into doing things for companies. So. You guys heard me saying this statistic many times, 75% of the S&P is scheduled to change in the next 10 years. All of these disruption waves are coming our way. We know someone is gonna occupy that 75%, but I want to help some of these companies stay within you know, the surviving companies, if you will. You, you, you may have heard or not about the, the problems that GE is facing right now in their stock taking a lot of hits. Uh, I, I can tell you because I, the, the one company that has 70 certifications for business agility is GE. And they, they are a company that have great people. But unfortunately, they're not doing that well and it's because they're not all that agile. They need to be more agile in choosing more question marks and trying more disruptive things. So, so you can see it, I mean, it's already happening, right? You see it already happening out there on the street. The, what we used to call blue chip companies, well, are not so blue anymore. They're getting, you know, and so, so this is the kind of stuff that we can do if we can help a GE or we can help a Caterpillar or John Deere or whatever, you know, I mean, that's, that's what I want to do. Guys, if there's no other questions, I think we should probably go back to our families and spend the rest of the Sundays with them. It's, it's a great pleasure to talk to you guys as, as always, you know. Thank you, Mike, for setting aside time in your, in your Sunday to, to talk with us. This was great. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, let's do this more often. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can, can I send you some um, uh, 
um, things on email. I, I want to I want to translate this uh, th those all these things in Spanish because some some people here in Mexico uh, they they don't they they, look, they like to have this material in Spanish. So uh, I just want to know if I can start translating them. Please please do if you have the cycles and you have the interest. Uh, yeah, okay. say, go right ahead, you know. <laughs> okay. I'm counting. It's a way to study it myself, so okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, Mike, thank you. Sounds great. Great talking to you guys. All right, thanks. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye.